Thank you very much. Okay. This is my first talk online. So I hope everything goes fine. Uh, I'm doing a little bit trick. Instead of giving a talk on online alive, I pre-recorded this talk and I just play I will just play this one. This talk is about the COVID-19, uh, coronavirus disease 2019. And in Korea, there are some, some, some schools open and there are some uh, COVID-19 prevention schemes using by the schools. And then I wanted to talk about how effective are they. Uh, schools are closed in many countries because of the, this uh, pandemic and recently some of the schools are reopened. In the Republic of Korea, my country, schools have started to reopen since 19, uh, uh, May 20, 2020 on the guideline of the government. Okay, here we have a table, in, but some of the schools are closed yet because of some incident of the coronavirus 19. And uh, in this table, so some small number of uh, schools, for example, in Seoul, zero special school, zero preschool, zero uh, one elementary school, two middle school, zero high school, total three. So three schools are closed in Seoul. But in the Guang, Guang, Guangzhou area, there are more schools are closed. Daejeon, Daejeon is my city, and uh, there are a little bit of schools are closed. And then Gyeonggi-do and Chungcheong-do and all others are fine. And now that these are the sum of the schools are closed, and then all number of schools are here. So right now, so, so at the uh, year, at the date, of July 18th, uh, about 40, 480 schools are closed out of 20,000. Okay, that's not that bad. And this is another table. This table says that uh, there are still many students, even if the schools are open, many schools stay home for various reasons. And this table, table number two, is talking about that. So some of the students are stay home because the health authorities ask to do so because of some incidents or, or some students who had some contact with some confirmed uh, patients, then they are asked to be stay home. And on, in total, total, as the date of the July 17th, 7th, uh, 516, and not, not that many, but some of the students check their temperature and if they have some some fever then they stay home and there's a 21,000 something. Now some students go to school but they found that there is some fever in the school then they are returned to home and this is the number. Okay. Now in Korea there's a lot of people are get uh, tested and this table is a kind of accumulation number of COVID-19 diagnosis test in school. So starting from uh, June 1st and until July 9th, these are numbers. So the so, so left hand side, these are the number of tests and these are the number of uh, confirmed or positive results. And right now, so at that, that day, there is about 50 confirmed and the number of total tests is about uh, 200,000, that's really a lot. So, uh, maybe it's a kind of program? So yeah. this one says that, okay, in Korea, the government. Now, what is this? Uh, oh, this is something I will let you, okay. Now the government gave the schools two guidelines. The first one, to keep a distance of one meter each other when students are inside or outside of their classroom. And the second guideline is that only a half of the students can stay in school at a time. So half of them 
half of the students stay home and uh, study in uh, online, and only the at most the half of the students can come to the school at the time. Now, to comply these two guidelines of the government, the schools developed mostly three strategies. The first one is a grade alternation. So if all the graders come to school one day, then the other day, the other graders come to school. That's a grade alternation. And also, there is some called class alternation. That means all the number of the classes come to school, then even numbers come to school the next day. The other one is the class splitting. So each class is split it into half, and the first half come to school one day, and the other day, the other half come to school. Okay, then the question is this. What is the best strategy among these three? And then how effective are they? Right now, the schools, they do not know how effective are they. Uh, they don't know which one is the better, but they just do. And then, okay, then can you say something about that? That is about this talk. This kind of issue will be appear in many places all over the uh, earth, all over the globe. So probably in US or Canada, in many other countries will start to open the schools and then they will have to think about this kind of issues. Okay. Then in mathematics, what can you do? So we have some math models for the, this epidemic. And one of the ba basic thing is SIR epidemic model. And what is this? I, 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 I believe most of you know this model. So I just briefly introduce them. So there's a total population N and they are divided into three fractional populations. S means susceptibles, I infected, R recovered. So R recovered people have immunity. Now we have a tau. Tau is a transmissibility per contact. So if you contact uh, other people with a disease, then there is some probability that you get transmitted. So this is a transmissibility tau. And D, D is the duration of the infectious period. Now C, contact rate per day. Beta is called infection rate, and this is uh, given by tau times C divided by N. And gamma recovery rate, that is one over duration of infectious period. And uh, using this gamma and beta, this SIR model is given in this way. So, so this is basically ODE model. Now you have to think about that this is second equation. Second equation is about the number of uh, infectious people and how they are increased. So I derivative of I is uh, given like this. So if this ratio is bigger than zero, then the number of infectious people increases. So epidemic breakout may happen in that case. So this one, it, it, you can easily check that. This is equivalent to that, this RT defined by this number, or given by this. So if you use this relation, then this relation gives you this. So if this one is bigger than one, then this is equivalent to the I that is bigger than one. And this number RT is called the reproduction number. And this reproduction number is the topic in this talk. Okay. Let's go. So this RT is called the reproduction number. And basically this RT is the average number of infections made by one infected person before recovery. So if this RT is bigger than one, that means the number of infectious people increases. And if RT is less than one, okay, population of uh, infectious people decreases. In particular, R lot, R lot means when T equals zero, is called the basic reproduction number. And before epidemic started, the number of susceptible people, ST, that means S0, is the same as the total population N. So this is canceled out. So we can see that this R0 is just tau times D times C, with transmissibility, duration, and the contact number. Now, this if R0 is less than 
one, that means from the beginning, reproduction number is less than one, so epidemic will not break out. And this R lot, this basic reproduction number, is the key of this talk. Now, I want to introduce you a paper, a very recent paper. I, I, I guess this one will probably published uh, less than one week ago, I guess. But this one was, uh, was there in, in, in the web on, on the archive for, for, for one month, I think. And, and this paper is about uh, the reproduction number. and the computational mechanics. Okay. So in their paper, they somehow want to find the reproduction number worldwide. And instead of SIR model, they used SEIR model. So they include one more population fraction, E. E is exposed. So these are the people who get infected, but not infectious yet. They have just a latent period. Okay, and then, okay, let's say delta will be, will be the manifest rate. So this is the rate to get infectious from latent period. And this EIR model is given like this. Okay, so, so just one more equation, but it does not big difference. Now some people consider a little bit more complicated one at the Q. Q is because of the, the some government always, if government find some people who get infected, they somehow isolate them. So quarantined population is Q. And okay, they, they also use this. Now, what they did, what they did is they collect all the data. So, so this is Finland, France, Germany, Germany and Greece, Hungary and in their paper, they work with the European countries and they collect the data of the people who get infected and this data and using their, this data, they somehow figure out the reproduction number. Okay. And, uh, okay, so, so I don't need to talk about the detail. And uh, they basically use a lot of data and use some machine learning technique and then they go, their goal is to figure out or find the reproduction number of the, each country. Okay, they are quite a little bit different. Now this is a basic reproduction number. So basic reproduction number is the reproduction number before government uh, intervened this, uh, this epidemic, epidemic outbreak. And then the government will do something and then this rate is changing and then this is now, many of them is now less than one. That means uh, the population of uh, infectious people decreases and hopefully it finishes sometime. Then, we need to think about what is the meaning of R0, basically production number of a country. Basically, we are talking about some ODE model, and uh, using this ODE model, somehow they match the occurrence of the disease on the whole country. For example, I, I'm bringing brought to here some map of France. So there are a lot of cities. Here is Alpes. There is many, many, many fields, many mountains, many cities, and then. This disease started some measures, some some places like uh, Paris or some other cities, and then there's a lot, so some some number of uh, instances appears in, in many different places, and they are somehow spreading. Okay, but anyway, what they do is okay. They took the OD model and then somehow match this population size, uh, this incident, and then somehow they want to find the R lot. But somehow, SIR model is not for this kind of global behavior. This is a big country. There are many heterogeneities. There are many different cities. But how come this SIR model can explain this phenomenon? This, I'm, I'm very negative about that. Sometimes people use this SIR model. Somehow want to predict when will be the peak of this uh, epidemic breakout. 
when it will start, uh, when will it stop, or uh, when the, the, the second breakout appears, this kind of thing. They want to predict using this model. But I'm not sure about that. This model is not to predict or not to find this kind of global picture. So what I claim is, okay, we are going to just stick to the study the local property using this local model. But still, there are many things we have to do with this uh, local model. Now we return to the original question. Can you tell how effective a COVID-19 prevention scheme is at an elementary school? So elementary school, I'm talking about some local phenomena, not that the one country, just one school. Then can you talk about that? So this, this work is a joint work with my 12 students, uh, Kei Choi, Kyungwon Choi, and uh, uh, Ho Young Kim. Now two statistics people, uh, my, my colleague of my department, and Chun, and uh, Hyun Oh Chun, and uh, Yun Sung Jung, and myself. Okay, so we have focused on the reproduction number a lot. This a lot is a function of contact patterns. That is the claim. So a lot is given like this. So tau transmissibility d duration. These two are more related to the disease itself. But C contact rate is the contact between people. So this one is uh, more about the society. So we can say that this uh, basic reproduction number depends on the society because of this uh, contact rate. Now the complexity of the society is heavily heterogeneous, depending on each. So, so we, we can find that the occurrence of this uh, epidemic depends on the society very heavily, in particular in Korea. And then, so, to find this basic reproduction number, somehow we should understand, we should know the contact pattern of a society. So this is the main claim of this my, my talk. And what we are going to study, what we have to consider is the contact pattern of schools. So in school, what we have, so, so basically, school consists of the classes and most of the students stay inside the classroom in particular not, not in the university what not, not in college but in at least in elementary schools and secondary schools most students stay in classroom and they contact with classmates mostly so we call this one self contact or intra class contact and also some of the students have contact with another other students in other class. We call this one inter-class contact or cross contact. Okay, so this is the contact pattern we are thinking about in the schools. Of course, there are also other factors. For example, you, have, you can consider the, the role of uh, teachers, they are a little bit different. So you can add the complexity to make this your model to more closer to the reality. But at least this two, two level of context, inter-class contact, cross contact, and intra-class contact, self-contact, this one is quite uh, detailed enough and we can figure out which strategy is uh, better using these uh, contact patterns. Okay. And contact with them is a, has a okay. And each student belongs to a class and mostly contact with the classmates. Each student may contact, okay. Okay, now, the, the basically the, the inter class contact and inter class contact, they play quite differently. Okay, so let's go next. And uh, in, in this talk, so, so, or in, in, in this paper, we mostly use the SIRS model. So what's the difference? The difference is this. 
So in recent papers, it is announced that the immunity of the coronavirus disease disappears quite a lot after two months. So immunity is not permanent. They disappears after some time. So because of that, we take SIRS model. So let's DM is the duration of the immunity. Then alpha immunity loss rate is one over DM. Now this one is SIRS model. And so alpha, beta, beta, gamma, gamma, alpha. So this is the model. Now, what we use is under this, this model, this uh, reproduction number, RT, is given by this re relation. R0 is given by this relation. When T is large, this RT becomes uh, 1 because it's coming to the steady state. And then you can just uh, compute N over ST for large T. Okay. Now, if you use this ODE model, you cannot, you, you cannot take the structure of the contact contact pattern of the schools. So what we what actually we are going to use is an individual model based on this dynamics. I'm not going to tell you about the detail of the this uh, individual based model, but, but many of you already know that. Okay, now this is the my first simulation for the individual model. So first we take wait a second I I went quite quickly, so so. Uh, I just yeah, this part I I I I I forgot to mention. So we are going to consider a school, like, like uh, elementary school, in Korea. In one elementary school has six grade levels, from first grader to sixth grader, and then okay, we assume we are considering some some typical elementary school which consists of seven classes for each grade and 30 students for each class. So in total, 1,260 students are in the school. However, by the uh, guideline of the government, only half of the students can stay in school. So at each time, there are almost 600 and 30 students. Okay, so I forgot to mention this. So, so this is kind of uh, the picture of the school. Now, this is simulation. So now here's the total number of students, 630. Transmissibility 0 0.04. And duration for the infectious day, that is 6. Now, duration of the immunity, that is 60. Okay, now first we consider a case that class size is just one. That means, okay, we want to consider a case without uh, class structure first. And then uh, this SC, SC is the uh, self contact. That means intra class contact. That is zero because of basically there is no class. Now cross contact is uh, uh, inter class contact basically, but anyway. 24.5. Now, group size or class size is one. Transmissibility is here. So, with these values, we get these pictures. So, so this one is the uh, three populations, S, I, R. Now, we computed R lot and then so we take R lot from here. Now, take the average of R lot. Then this is basically production number for this situation is about 5.69. Okay, if R line is 5.69, then contact rate should be 23.75. So this one is the contact rate of the individual based model. This is the contact corresponding contact rate for the ODE model, which is quite close. Okay. Now, second, we consider now case with the class size. 10, for example. So group size equal 10. And now I gave here cross contact, 5. And then self contact, 50. All together, 55. But somehow if you compute this one, then this R lot becomes 5.71. Now, then the corresponding contact rate for the ODE case is 23. 
85. So this number, this context corresponding to this context of the OD model. So, okay. So somehow, if this uh, uh, self content rate and this cross content rate are given, then we can find this uh, uh, basic reproduction number. So if we can do this, we use this basic reproduction number to compare which is scheme is better. Now here is the, the, the three strategies and then or three schemes and then normal operation scheme. So normal one is uh, the total number of students is uh, 1,260. There are 42 classes. Class size is uh, class size, the number of students in the class. That's uh, 30. Now we said intra class, so self contact is uh, 175. Now inter class contact, that is uh, 10. So basically, it's about uh, 17 times bigger than the intra class contact is. Now, in that case, this R lot is 20, about 20 for doing this. Now, I want to say that the exact, exact value of, of, of this R lot does not mean much in, because these coefficients are given somehow uh, conceptually. Okay, but the ratio makes sense. Now, grade alternation, then it's a great alternation, total number always is 630. Now great alternation, number of class 21, class size not changed. Now interclass contact not changed because class size is not changed. And the interclass contact. So if there are the total number of classes are reduced, then interclass probably re reduced a little bit. So we said eight, now compute a lot. But in this case, a lot is not changed a lot. No. Now, class alternation. So, cl class alternation case, this interclass contact becomes smaller because you have the, your, your class is here. That the next to, to the class, your neighbor class, they are not there. So, this interclass cl contact reduced more. This is, then let's say six, then this one is the reproduction number. Now class splitting, then the class size is reduced. Then intra-class also, intra-class contact is also reduced. And inter-class contact is not reduced that much, but this a lot decreases a lot. So this one is what I'm talking about, the class size effect. Now you can also do something else. Okay, suppose let's take the class splitting method, okay. But you do, you can do some extra effort to reduce interclass contact rate or intraclass contact rate. So let's just f first try the try to reduce the intraclass contact rate, keeping interclass contact rate same. So 120, now 40, so one third. Then this one reduced from 10 to 7. Now here 13 another one third, then here 4.56, so about half. However, if you keep this one to 120 and try to reduce the interclass contact, okay? So this means that you ask your students not to go to other classroom and just stay in your classroom, okay? Then this a lot reduces a lot. For example, if you, the, the interclass contact was the three, nine, uh, reduced to the three, then it's 5.98, reduced to one, 1.71. 1 so somehow reducing interclass contact is actually easier than reducing intraclass contact. So you ask your students inside the classroom, don't, 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 don't touch each other, that's very hard. But it's quite easy to ask your students not to go to the other classroom. And they can stay happily in the classroom. That's more important. So this is the way we can somehow, if so, so the point here is if you understand the contact pattern of the school, then somehow you can compare each strategy, which one gives a smaller a lot.
So previously, I tried to, we tried to choose the parameters in a reasonable way, reasonable way, okay? But possibly it's not in a reasonable reason, then what we can do, we do all the possible ranges of the parameters. So we made here some contour map with contact rates changing from zero to 10, the cross contact, now class size from zero to 300, and then we make the map. This contour map gives you some information about the property of a lot and the and contact patterns. Now, if you can see, if you see here, then then somehow we will make the cross sections of this map, and then we obtain here the, the, what we have. Then, for example, class size and then basic reproduction number relation. That's almost a linear or super linear. Now here, rate of the cross contact, and then here is the reproduction number, then it is sublinear. Now this one gives you some important information. For example, if you reduce control cross contact, then in this region it's not so effective, but in this region it's very, very effective. Now it's a linear, that means wherever you are, it's if equally effective. This is the relation between the uh, class size and then rate of the cross contact. Now the next one is interclass contact, cross contact, and then interclass contact, self contact. Now they have this kind of picture. Now this one is this cross section. So if you can compare these things, then we may understand this, uh, the property of this uh, uh, production number under this uh, contact pattern better. And I believe this one may help the decision of the schools. Okay. Now, contact pattern. So, so the main point of this talk is the contact pattern of a society, whatever this society is. That's very important in deciding basic reproduction number. So here we claim what we claim here is that the social complexity needs to be studied from the epidemic spreading point of view. So yeah, that, that's true. There are a lot of studies about the complexity of the society from many different viewpoints. Now it's time to do it with the epidemic spreading viewpoint. Now, there are many levels of complexity. The school case is quite simple, but there are many other cases. And actually, there are, it's a little bit oversimplified. Basically, one, one people, one person belongs to two to groups. So for example, family is the basic group everybody belongs. And then you have some, some work groups or fellow groups, then these groups is somehow connected to each other and then understand, so, so basically it's kind of multi-level groups. Understanding this kind of structure, that's also important. And I think that under, if you understand the contact pattern more, then you can find a lot better. And then nowadays what we say is that, oh, if this coronavirus stays long time together. Then what is the best way? I think the best way is to find some contact pattern or way of contact people that reduce a lot. And if this one is too painful, that's not good. But if you can find some way or some pattern which is affordable, it's not so expensive, not so painful, but it gives you some relatively smaller a lot, then okay, that's the way we can handle this situation then we stay in that way for a long time, then we, we will have a more, more chance to win this uh, battle. Now here we do a little bit different things also. So contact patterns without group structure. So now let's think about a little bit more fundamental things, a little bit more mathematical thing. Now, not, not so realistic, but mathematically interesting questions. So if you consider this pattern, 
So each person has a contact number four. So contacts with four people. Now they somehow organize in this uniform way. That's it, this is contact number four. Everybody contact with other people, four other four people. Now this, this picture is a contact number six. This picture is a contact number eight, but they are somehow uniformly distributed, okay? Also, but, but even if this contact number is four, you may consider some other kind of patterns, something like this. So this one is a contact four people randomly. Okay, this one is con choose uh, six people randomly. This is uh, choose eight people randomly. Uh, basically, even if this is four, what, what it is one people, one person choose two randomly, and the other, everybody choose two people randomly, that means the average contact is four. Actually, this is that case. Three, every people choose three people, then sometimes you are not chosen, then your contact number is a three. But if you, there is some chance that many people contact you, then your contact number could be more than six. But anyway, the average is six. Now this is average is eight. Now sometimes you can also consider a contact. This kind of contact is somehow you choose this kind of network and the fixed, or you can choose the, the, the contact number of people randomly every time. Then that is quite a, quite a different situation. Then in each case, you can also compute this uh, basically production number, and then you can, under, you can understand that this kind of networks a little bit better. And this one is the table. Now here we added one more thing. In Dejan area, some time ago, some, some incident happened. That is, uh, there are some group of people, sales people, they visit door to door. And these people get started, brought this disease, coronavirus, and uh, that causes some trouble in my, my city. So we call the, study the inf, consider the influence of door to door salesmen in social disturbing, social distancing situation, something like that. Okay, then we consider the three cases. Uniformly distributed network, the, the first line, uh, I, I, I mean, these are the three cases. Now, randomly distributed network, that's the, the second line. Now, randomly but evolving, choosing every time. Then, then we have three cases. Then you, you may compute this a lot without the spreader without this salesman, and then yeah, on this one. Then you can see that uniformly distributed case has the smallest uh, R lot, and this is randomly chosen, it's a bigger R lot. Now here, randomly and evolving every time, but the average contact number is the same, but then this one has a lot bigger R lot. So even if the contact, so here's the point is this, People thought that if contact number is fixed, then R lot is fixed. No, if even if the contact number is the same, the R lot is quite different. That is the point. Now you have the spreader. If you add the spreader, then contact number may increase, something like this. But you can see that it is a randomly evolving network case. Contact number is increased, and this R lot, basically production number increases quite relatively small. small. But here, very large. Okay, then somehow it's, it's very hard to say what is the effect of the this kind of spreader. In the world, in the real situation, there are many spreaders, many kinds of spreaders. So what is their role or their effect? So, so to understand this effect, you should understand your network, what kind of network you have. But I don't know what is our network. But their role is quite different here, 22% increase, but here 0.57% increase. So it's quite uh, different. So it could be important issue to understand the role, the, the way of spreading. Okay, now, next one. So the previous network is a network of individuals. Now this one is a network of groups, then how they evolve, then, the, then 
how the groups are connected to each other, so then, then they are spreading in this group network is also quite different. Conclusion, a lot depends on contact patterns. We need to design a contact pattern which provides small enough a lot and is affordable enough. And mathematical epidemic models such as SIR model can be used to find a better contact pattern. Is it because this is a local phenomenon? Don't use the model to predict global phenomena. No. Use the local model for local behavior. That is the conclusion of this talk. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>